This is NR2003 Predicts. Using constantly updating ratings, we determine where Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series drivers will place at any given track any given week. Standard disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes only using the process of artificial intelligence and should not be used in the process of gambling. So here's how it works. We update drivers' ratings week by week as we go throughout the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series schedule. We run a 100% simulation with normal tire wear and fuel consumption. Qualifying results match what the drivers actually ran in real life. Because qualifying data can't be arranged at the same time as forcing cautions, stages will not be enforced throughout these races. And weather use reflects the real-time data based on the actual start time of the race. SHR starting 1, 2, 3, 4. Clint Boyer on pole for the first time in 12 years. Green flag out for the opening race of the 2019 playoffs. Boyer gets the instant jump on the inside line over Suarez, but now he cuts to the outside while Harvick looks like he's going to charge and he's going to be able to get to the inside of Boyer going into turn three. And with a line of cars just behind him, it looks like he's easily going to get up to the front and lead this first lap. And it is going to belong to Harvick while Kurt Busch falls in behind. Pack staying together early on in this race. Joey Logano, the winner of the last race here at Las Vegas in the spring. He also happens to have the best average finish among active drivers here. 8.5 in 12 races. That win in the spring was his first one here at the racetrack. The big surprise on the playoffs, Jimmy Johnson missing out. So obviously we know he's not going to be a part of the championship talk this year, but he does have the most wins among active drivers here, four in total. Over 19 starts, just above 20% of the time he's been here. Keselowski came up second to his teammate Logano in the spring. But he happened to win the race here last year. First time they'd run it in the summer. Also has three wins overall in 12 races. So 25% of the time they come to this racetrack, he's a victor. Kevin Hart coming up the inside. He is a two-time winner at this racetrack. Kind of goes up and down in terms of getting within the top 10 here. He only has nine top 10s and 20 starts. Martin Trex Jr. trying to work his way up the field. You can see he's caught in a little bit of traffic. He has a victory here. That came back in 2017. Now trying to see if he can get back to victory lane here in 2019. Kyle Busch, the hometown hero. He only has one win here in the Cup Series coming from 2009. He won both the truck and the Xfinity race back in spring, but he is looking for the victory in the Cup Series for the first time in 10 years. Let's go back to the playoff talks and look who's out in front. Ryan Newman taking the lead. Hasn't gotten a victory so far this season. The two drivers behind him, Chase Elliott and Kurt Busch, have. But he is showing some strength early. But a problem for one of the playoff drivers, Joey Logano. Looks like he has a flat tire. He takes it down to the apron in turns three and four. He's going to head to pit lane. That is going to cost him a lap and possibly two. Looks like for now it's just one lap down. Here's the other Bush brother, Kurt Busch. Now putting himself out in front. He battled with Kyle at Kentucky another mile and a half to get his own victory this season. The one, the only one he's gotten so far coming with Chip Ganassi Racing. Looking further back in the field. This is what appears to be our lowest running playoff driver besides Logano. William Byron and out in front of him is Alex Bowman. Hendrick just looking like they're struggling right now on the speed department. Bowman able to get a victory at Chicagoland, the first of his career in the Cup Series. William Byron still seeking out his first career Cup win. But those two are looking like they're not going to get it here today as long as it stays the way that it is because they are not doing too well in traffic at the moment. Looks like Kyle Busch is making his way up to the front for the first time, trying to get to the underside of Brad Keselowski while his teammate Joey Logano is trying to stay from going two laps down. But it looks like Bush is going to be able to get out in front. Here's the third Penske driver, Ryan Blaney. He's kind of bringing in the back of the pack among these five drivers that have put themselves out in front. You can see there's a little bit of a gap between fifth and sixth. Blaney still looking for his first win of the season. A little bit of silly season news. Over the week, we found out that Paul Menard is going to be stepping out of full-time competition and getting out of that 21 car, and that's going to be handed over to Matt Benedetto, who obviously put together a solid performance at Bristol 
finishing, finishing runner-up after saying that he wouldn't be back at Lamine Family Racing. So he's going to head over to that seat. And meanwhile, in this race, he is not showing too much speed. Falling a little bit further back. Here's a driver that is having a solid day. David Reagan, he qualified pretty well up in 11th spot. And it looks like that speed has translated over into the race. Can't say the same about Michael McDowell, who's out of sight, even though he qualified within the top 10. But looks like for the 38 car, another one of those drivers that is going to be retiring at the end of the season. He's having a solid run so far. Kyle Busch on the back end of Joey Logano. You can see he is really pulling away from Jimmy Johnson and then Johnson from the rest of the field. Those two are just kind of getting away from everyone else. And it looks like it's going to come down to those two. If they stay green, Daniel Suarez is going to be the first one to come down for a pit stop. That is going to be happening on the green flag. And Kyle Busch also going to come down. This should help out Joey Logano get his laps back because he obviously took his pit stop early. But it's all going to cycle back unless we have this. Chris Buescher and Reed Sorensen making contact coming out of turn four. Up the track, Sorensen's going to go. And right in front of Denny Hamlin and Chase Elliott also collected. William Byron also in it a little bit. But that is... A big crash for playoff contenders. There goes Sorensen off the front end. Hamlin hoping he goes back up the racetrack and stays down to the low side. But he does end up getting collected. And you can see there's the 24 car getting a little bit of damage. Doesn't look as severe as the other two playoff drivers. Hamlin is going to drop out though as well as Sorensen in this one. But obviously the 11 car bigger for this race for playoff contention. William Byron's going to come down a few laps after the green flag to make some further repairs, met minimum speed, and eliminated that uh, damage clock. So they can work on that as long as they need to. They're definitely going to be looking for some speed. Meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson looks like he came down for a second pit stop during the caution. Obviously, he made his pit stop before, but he came down for another set of fresh tires. Contact right here. Daniel Suarez and Paul Menard. Contact with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Clint Boyer getting held up. No caution yet. Oh, look at the pile up here. Everyone smashed together as they try to avoid this one, but no caution coming out as Daniel Suarez took some hard hits onto the wall. And it looks like they're going to keep going on. Here comes Joey Logano. He got his laps back thanks to those pit stops and then the caution coming out. It looks like he did come down for his pit stop again because obviously he was running on some older tires. But now he's trying to battle with some traffic. Here comes Jimmy Johnson once again. Like we mentioned, he took tires and now it looks like that's playing out in his favor as he tries to go to the underside of Eric Jones. And look who's coming up underneath Jimmy Johnson. It's Ryan Priest. I believe he also took tires, but this is incredible from the 47 driver, a rookie who finished 25th here in the spring. Not expecting this kind of speed out of this car, but he is trying to go for it, and he's trying to go for the lead even. Going to the underside of Kyle Busch, that's William Byron out in front, trying to avoid going another lap down, but Priest is going to the lead. What a run by the JTG Doherty Racing Team. Here comes Keselowski to the underside of Martin Truex Jr. Keselowski looking for that fourth victory to tie Jimmy Johnson for the most wins among active drivers at this racetrack. Chase Elliott running mid-pack, but obviously was involved in that crash with Sorensen and Hamlin. You can see the back-end damage. You would think that car would be running a lot slower than it is, but he's actually doing pretty well against some of these drivers that run mid-pack normally. And it looks like Kyle Busch is going to get some help from his teammate Truex Jr. to get back to the underside of Priest. And we'll head back to the first position. But still, got to give a hand to Priest and the 47 team. They put together a fast car today. Here's Almirola. He is running in sixth position. You can see the gap between him and fifth place as that top five is kind of broken away. Almirola is trying to get some help from behind. Bubba Wallace was a name that we heard a lot of. Turned some heads at Indianapolis with a third place run. Definitely not what we expected out of that 43 team. At the moment, he's doing a pretty solid run as well. Running in the top 20 alongside Alex Bowman. Daniel Suarez is dropping back in the field meanwhile. And obviously, we saw that hit he took into the outside wall in turn four. And it's not just the traffic that's holding him up. It's that damage. And it's going to be hurting him a lot in this race if he doesn't come down and get it repaired. It looks like Michael McDowell is going to come down for green flag pit stop. And that should start a cycle. Here comes the leaders, Kyle Busch, Jimmy Johnson, Martin Trix Jr. We'll see how they cycle out when they come back out. And Eric Jones coming in. He's going to make contact with Bubba Wallace. And that is going to stall him out on pit lane. And that is going to cost Jones a few laps. That is 
very big. Two JGR cars having problems in the early stages of this race, trying to go for some extra playoff points, and they are experiencing problems on the racetrack and on pit lane. Truex Jr. and Kyle Busch have the clear edge on the rest of the field at the moment. Ryan Priest has not necessarily lost that edge. He's still in the seventh play position after that set of pit stops, but has fallen away from that lead group. Meanwhile, Eric Jones has returned to the racetrack, but he is multiple laps down, and that was exactly the thing that he did not need. He's going to have to hope for some more problems for playoff drivers if he has any shot of getting back to a little bit of an advantage going into the next two races. Kyle Busch and Truex Jr. experiencing a little bit of traffic. You can see some of the drivers have to put in a lap down, including Chase Elliott. Even though that car is a little bit up to power, he's still not as fast as the rest of these guys. Jimmy Johnson three seconds back on the leaders, but obviously not in traffic. Just a matter of can he catch a little bit of a draft, and it looks like he is going to get a little help as he is catching up to the 18 car of Kyle Busch. You can see there's a few other drivers that are competing for position, like Kyle Larson coming up from behind, as well as Brad Kozlowski and Ryan Newman. And it looks like Truex Jr. is going to get held up on the outside line, and Jimmy Johnson coming to the inside. 48 with a head of steam going to the inside, and it looks like Truex Jr. is going to fall victim to second place as well. That's Kyle Busch. Under 100 laps to go now. We should only be seeing one more pit stop before the end of this one. Kevin Harvick running a bit mid-pack at the moment, at least as the playoff drivers go. As you can see, Joey Logano out in front, and then in the distance, you can see Ryan Blaney and Clint Boyer, who are just inside the top 10. Meanwhile, the Hendrick drivers are struggling with their own problems. Alex Bowman in front of William Byron on the track, but obviously Byron is at least a couple laps down because of his own problems with the wreck. Ryan Newman holding his own in the underdog role as he is catching up to the rest of those front runners, along with Keselowski and Ryan Priest still somehow staying up here and battling with these guys. You know he is not a playoff driver. He could, he could still go for his first win. Truex Jr. are going to work underneath his teammate Eric Jones. That would put Jones another lap down. Obviously stalled out on pit lane and trying to avoid getting put down another lap. Would like to build up as many laps as he can and get some more points. Ryan Blaney is trying to work up with his teammate, Joey Logano, as they break away a little bit from the 11th and 12th place guys. And another move looking for Kyle Busch. Jimmy Johnson, though, has found his way out into the front, and Truex Jr. going to try to cut to the inside of the 18 car, and looks like he might have it. So a constant battle up here for the first position, but here we go. We got Air, uh, Alex Bowman coming down for pit stop, and it looks like this will be the last green flag stop they'll need to make as we're about 60 laps to go in this one. Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch coming down for their pit stop. Let's see how it all cycles out, and it will be Kyle Busch, Truex Jr., and Jimmy Johnson in the top three as they've built up a little bit of a gap over Ryan Newman. And there you can see Newman and Keselowski trying to draft off each other to try to catch back up to the rest of the group. And Jimmy Johnson getting held up by J.J. Yaley in the 53 car, and that will allow Newman and Keselowski to go around him. And now they're going to try to chase down the 18 and 19, the two teammates that have avoided trouble all day. While Denny Hamlin has crashed out, and Eric Jones got in a scuffle on pit lane. It's going to be an up-and-down day for JGR if that's the case. Eric Almirola running in the sixth position. You can see the leaderboard. He is six seconds back on the leader and about five seconds back on fifth place. So at this point, it's going to take a lot of drafting help to try to get that group back up to the lead group, which you can see Ryan Newman has taken a control of. It's a group of six drivers, five of which are competing for position. Ty Dillon just kind of stuck in the middle of it, trying to get his lap back. But at the moment, it's Newman out front, winless so far this season. Obviously on a bit of a winless streak. Just trying to see if he can grab the victory here today. Joey Logano is working his way into ninth position. Kevin Harvick and Ryan Blaney, his teammates, just behind him. They are about nine seconds back on the leaders. Meanwhile, Kyle Busch has gotten around the sixth car and now paces out front. Trying to see what he can do to get the victory. However, there's going to be late trouble. BJ McLeod gets turned by Alex Bowman in the middle of the trioval. But the problem is not going to end here. Watch as they come around. Here comes a group, of, another group of drivers. Kevin Hart goes right into the back of the 51. 51 comes up and gets into the 22. Kurt, 
Kurt Busch and Clint Boyer make contact, and the 51 goes over. So about five playoff drivers have an involvement in that one. Pretty much everyone that was involved in that besides McLeod was a playoff driver, and that is going to take out Harvick. He is going to drop out of this race amazingly. He was doing a solid run up there in the top 10. He's going to finish 36th as it finishes. Meanwhile, Keselowski going to work to the underside of Newman and Kyle Busch, trying to go for the lead as we're just under 15 laps to go. Going into turn one and a big boost on the inside line to get the lead. But here comes Truex Jr. trying to take it back. Three car out front is Austin Dillon trying to stay on the lead lap. Truex Jr. works his way to the inside. He's going to get around the two cars, able to clear him in the tri-oval. Kyle Busch trying to work his way back up after falling back on the outside line. He got held up by Ty Dillon, was able to find his way around eventually. Now trying to track down his teammate and the two car. And he's doing it pretty well. Gets into turn three, gets the edge on the two car, and he's to the inside. Side by side coming out of turn number four. And the 18 looks like he has the more better speed and the 19 is going to help him with the draft. Kyle was back to the lead with three laps to go. And coming through, he is holding the lead over his teammate Martin Truex Jr. It's been 10 years since Kyle Busch has won a cup race here at this racetrack, his home racetrack. Truex Jr. is trying to get back to him, but it doesn't look like he's going to have enough speed, nor Keselowski is their single file behind him. It's been a winless drought of over three months for Kyle Busch. Four victories on the season, but they all came in those first four months of the year. This time, he's going to have it. Win number five of the season. And first win since 2009 at Las Vegas for Kyle Busch. Big victory for several reasons for Kyle Busch. As he is going to advance in the playoffs. Obviously, he came in here with the most playoff points. Truex Jr., Keselowski, and Newman, all playoff drivers finishing behind him. Jimmy Johnson grabs the top five. Then you got several other playoff drivers getting in there in the top ten. Ryan Priest with a great eighth place run. Able to put that together for the JTG team. Going back ten positions, you can see Clint Boyer just on the outside, but he's the last car on the lead lap. Chase Elliott finishing 14th. I believe that caution might have helped him get a good restart and gain some positions back. Well, I think it hurt Alex Bowman, who drops back to 19. Some great runs in the top 20 by Ross Chastain and Landon Castle. David Reagan was up there a while and ended up in 15th. Kurt Busch ends up 21st. I'm surprised that the wreck did that much damage to his race car. Paul Menard ends up 26th. Not a great day for him. William Byron all the way back in 30th position after his problems on the racetrack. Eric Jones five laps down, as well as Daniel Suarez finishing 32nd and 33rd. Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin dropping out of the race that is really going to shake up these playoffs. That is it for this edition of NRC 3 Predicts. We hope you enjoyed the race, and we will see you all next time.